The human psyche contains many preformed ideas and behavioral responses, which we have inherited from the ancestry of the human species. These systems can also be found in many animals and are beneficial for survival by allowing the animal to make quick decisions in different situations without needing to process every detail. One of the earliest archetypes which predominates in the life of mammals is the mother archetype, which has an immense grip over the psyche of young mammals. However, a second archetypal system is also activated soon after this, and this is that of the father archetype. The father archetype, just like the mother archetype, is a primordial force in the psyche. Archetypes are not always clearly delineated from one another, and so the father archetype refers to a set of related archetypal systems that have different functions throughout our lives. Just like the mother, the father or any father figures appear to have a numinous quality to the child. As Jung writes, the personal father inevitably embodies the archetype, which is what endows this figure with its fascinating power. The archetype acts as an amplifier, enhancing beyond measure the effects that proceed from the father, so far as these conform to the inherited pattern. This archetype has multiple roles in the psyche, as the father is symbolically both a role model and an authoritative presence meant to reaffirm good behavior while curbing bad behavior, although it is often not only the personal father which fulfills this role. To best understand this archetype, it will help to examine its archaic origins. Social animals require psychological and behavioral mechanisms which can help maintain order within the group and prevent infighting. One such mechanism is what biologists call dominance. In most animal groups, there is a hierarchy of rank where some animals are dominant relative to others. Subordinate animals must give way to these dominant animals. For instance, wolves will lower their heads as a sign of submission and so the dominant individuals have authority over the other group members. The decision-making function of the group is thus allocated to one or a few individuals, while all other members are subordinate to these decisions. The dominant individuals may decide when it is time to hunt, to find water, or to move to a new territory, and this allows the group to stay together in a relatively coordinated manner. In most primate species, males are dominant relative to females, although there are some exceptions, like the bonobos and ring-tailed lemurs. It may seem like dominant individuals in primate societies are just authoritative bullies, but this is far from the whole truth. They are often keen on maintaining group stability and act as mediators whenever conflicts arise. The young members of the group often look up to the dominant individuals, seeing them as role models and heroes. Other group members may try to emulate the behavior of the dominant individuals, and at this early stage, there is little independence, and the group members may perceive themselves not as individual, but as an extension of the authority of the dominant individual. Humans have also retained this archetypal behavior from our primate past, since we also possess an inclination to obey authority figures. In human societies, fathers tend to play a more active role in the child's life, helping to shape the child's behavior in accordance with social norms and rules. Obedience to an authority figure helps the child adapt to society and become a successful adult. As Anthony Stevens writes, By representing society to the family and his family to society, the father facilitated the transition of the child from home to the world at large. He encouraged the development of skills necessary for successful adult adaptation while at the same time communicating to the child the values and mores prevailing in the social system. That he performed, and in many parts of the world still performs, this function is no mere accident of culture. It rests on an archetypal foundation. In this sense, the father acts as a bridge between the child's archetypal psyche and the norms of society, conditioning the child's behavior to these norms. This is why the father archetype is crucial for the development of the ego, since it plays a role in removing the child from his mystical participation in his natural instincts, i.e. the Ouroboros. The child internalizes the rules taught by authority figures, and this internalization becomes the child's ego. Eric Neumann discusses this fact in the context of tribal chiefs, who act as a father figure for the entire group. 
The function of the chief, which is to will and decide, becomes the model for all subsequent acts of free will in the ego of the individual. And the lawmaking function, originally attributed to God, and later to the man of personality, has in modern man become his inner court of conscience. While the mother is archetypally seen as the source of safety, comfort, and nourishment, the father is seen as more stern and punishing, in order to correct socially unacceptable behavior. Additionally, the child often sees the father as a heroic ideal and the template of masculinity. The psyche of a young child needs a role model to look up to, and the father archetype furnishes this need. The archetype itself may be projected onto the personal father, as is often the case in early life, but it may also be projected onto other influences, such as tribal leaders or even celebrities. It is important for the child to have role models to base his or her behavior off of, as they are largely dependent on others to learn how to function within society. Children who are deprived of such influences as they grow up can often face psychological difficulties. As Stevens writes, Jung believed that the father's presence was crucial if the boy was to actualize in consciousness and in behavior his own masculine potential. Lack of a father makes this transition hard and sometimes impossible to achieve. Because both genders carry qualities of the opposite gender, the father archetype plays a role in actualizing the masculine ideal of conscious independence and self-reliance in both boys and girls. Without a father figure, kids are more likely to become aggressive and engage in deviant behavior, such as drug abuse. However, it should be noted that people in this situation can and often do overcome these psychological difficulties and go on to live healthy, productive lives. Human societies extend the principle of the father archetype to form larger groups under the leadership of a single chief, king, or emperor, who often cast themselves in the role of father for the collective society, and present themselves as the ideal template which all other people should strive to attain. These collective father figures set the rules for society, and attempt to ensure that these rules are obeyed. Hero worship can be understood as derived from the father archetype, since we idealize our heroes and see them as models for how we should behave. Mankind's depictions of various masculine deities are also manifestations of the father archetype projected into myths and religions. These metaphysical father figures fulfill the same role as the personal father, but on a larger societal scale. These gods also represent the ideal model to which all should attempt to strive. In myth, legend, and dreams, the father archetype personifies as the elder, the king, the father in heaven. As lawmaker, he speaks with the voice of the collective authority and is the living embodiment of the Logos principle. His word is law. As defender of the faith and of the realm, he is the guardian of the status quo and the bastion against all enemies. His attributes are activity and penetration, differentiation and judgment, fecundity and destruction. His symbols are heaven and the sun, lightning and the wind, the phallus and the weapon. Heaven symbolizes the spiritual aspirations of the masculine principle, of which the father is the primal carrier. But in nearly all religions and mythologies, heaven is by no means the realm of universal good. It is also the origin of natural disasters and human catastrophes, the seat from which the Godhead passes judgment, and from which he punishes with thunderbolts and rewards with boons. It is the throne room of the primordial patriarch, where he freely exercises his powers of life and death over his wives and children. Although the father archetype has a positive influence on the child, just like the mother archetype, it also has a negative dark side. Because the father is an authoritative presence, he is necessarily involved in restricting freedom. This is good if it enables the child to adapt to life, but it can also be excessive and prevent the child from self-actualizing and discovering what makes him unique. The consequence of this is the breeding of mass-mindedness, where people are more inclined to follow authority figures rather than to think for themselves and achieve independence. This is why, in the natural psychological development of the individual, the psyche attempts to rid itself of exterior influences and assert itself as the master of its own will. This striving for independence is important for becoming oneself, 
rather than being defined by the will and expectations of others. This psychological striving for independence results in the killing of the father motif in mythology, an archetypal idea which can be observed in hundreds of myths and represents the fight against the dark side of the father archetype. The ego naturally attempts to be free from this authoritative influence, and so while the father archetype can lead to beneficial psychological developments, it can also be a negative influence, which stifles the uniqueness of the individual. In recent times, more and more young men and women are growing up without father figures, and this has been worsened by a prevailing belief that fathers have little or no influence over the lives of their children. However, it has been demonstrated that fathers do play an important role in the lives of children, and being deprived of a father can have long-lasting psychological consequences. This is why an understanding of archetypes can be so beneficial for our understanding of human psychology, as it allows us to trace the natural roots of our instinctual nature, as well as allowing us to understand what psychological influences will lead to a positive psychological outcome at the individual level.